Hey, Kenny. Uh, you know, against Baylor, the three bigs didn't do much scoring wise. How much of that was maybe just some matchup struggles, or do you guys need to find, you know, maybe put a little more emphasis into the, getting them in the offensive flow and such? Well, I think the first half of that game, the Baylor game, that we, it caught us off guard, you know, the amount of possessions that they played zone. So we were tentative against the zone. The second half, uh, we realized that, um, you know, we got the ball to the post or pinch post. And what it did, it made them collapse. And from there, they could make passes out. Not necessarily just to score, but just to get the ball in the paint, to get them to suck in and then throw it out. And then you have driving angles of that such. Gotcha. And I know I know you can't talk about individual recruits, but things are going well. Just when you got back with with Cal, did you have a sense that there'd be no issue in in the recruiting uh, shifting from UK over here to Arkansas? Uh, you know, it's a different day and age now. So it's, you know, it's not like when I was with Cal at Arkansas, at Kentucky, when, you know, there was no NIL, there was no transfer portal. Um, so now the dynamics of the landscape has changed. Uh, but the basic and the principles of what we're about has it. Um, this is not just a one-sided situation. In recruiting, um, it has to be two sides that benefit from this, meaning that the player has to have dreams and aspirations, and he has to also know that we're trying to win a championship. We're trying to establish a winning culture, a championship culture here. And so if we both can meet each other on, on an equal playing field and, and the relationship works, it works. And one more from me, Boogie Fland, you know, another seven assists, zero turnovers against Baylor. Him as the point guard, you know, what are some of the keys for a freshman like that to just come in and step in and, and be so good finding teammates, taking care of the ball and such? Well, that was a, a big statement for him to go out and have seven assists and zero turnovers. Um, I would say to you that the goal for him is to learn and to learn fast. This is only game two. Um, and him and DJ – who also plays the point at times, um, they have to they have to control the game and play in a way where um, they're natural scores. And being a natural scorer, you know, you sometimes forget your instincts um, or to score, and you don't think about the past. That was the first indication from from us as a staff that Boogie's getting better at understanding. I can, yes, I can score. I'm a natural scorer, but I also can help my teammates get better. Seven assists. Anthony. Hey, Kenny, hope you're doing well. Uh, you know, Coach Cal has talked, you know, a decent amount about, you know, not having time to implement his own offense. Just, uh, you know, what have been the biggest struggles for you guys going up against his own defense and just how have you guys kind of tried to, you know, alleviate some of those struggles so far? Well, the biggest struggle is we are just now getting players to where we could practice against each other and put things in that, that um, for example, it's one thing to walk through a zone offense. It's another thing to play against a zone offense and have, you know, five legitimate players to play against it. <laughs> so we are just now getting to that point where we're getting players healthy to where they can we can go against each other in live situations and react and see the nuances of the zone. And then, you know, just the time that it takes, you're not going to figure out a zone in the first week of the season, second week of the season, second game of the year. It's going to take time. And we just got to know that and be a great passing team, uh, attack the zone, know where the gaps are, and not be passive or tentative versus the zone. And then talking about Zavonimir, I know he didn't necessarily have the scoring game you probably want him to have against Baylor, but just how have you kind of seen him grow and develop just since you and him have both been on campus? Uh, I think he's gotten better. Um, by no means, me personally, uh, am I 
satisfied with where he is because I think there's more in there. The goal is to dig it out and to dig it out quickly for him to understand his role on this team. Um, really, Z is a freshman. Um, he went to Kentucky last year and he wasn't really clear to play too late. Um, and he didn't get a chance to get a rhythm into college basketball. So this is his first time. And he's learning. He's learning the responsibility of being in shape. He's learning the responsibility of bringing a physicality to this. Um, and the responsibility of, you know, you have to be the last line of defense and create rim protection for this team to be successful. We need him. We love him. Uh, he has gotten better, but we got a long way to go. And then last one from me, just uh, just what are your kind of brief, I guess, just general overviews about Troy, a team 2-0, won both our games by, by double figures so far? Tough game, uh, tough team. Uh, they shoot the ball well. They're physical. Um, they create a situation defensively where they create turnovers. Um, they got 11 players, I think, back from last year's team. They got four guys in double figures. Um, they are a very good basketball team um, that, you know, we know that we got to play well to beat them. Uh, our length and athleticism better be in play. Our attention to detail better be in play because this team is a very good team. And Cal has done a great job of explaining to this to our guys that you got to be the aggressor no matter what they throw at us. You better be ready to deal with it. And we went over the game plan over and over again to make sure that these guys are ready for it. Bob. Hey, hey Kenny. In, uh, in, in Scout and Troy, those first two games, were they a defensively man, zone, mix it up? Well, what did you see from them defensively? Both man and zone, very aggressive, a lot of pressure on the ball, taking the wings away, denying, a lot of run and jump, um, a lot of even when they're in the zone, uh, it's run and jump. Uh, three guys will just run toward the ball. You better be able to get the gaps quick. Um, you better be passing the ball efficiently. You better be strong with the ball because they'll come at you from at any time, from any angle, whether they're man or zone. And they're aggressive. They're aggressive and they play for steals. I know. I think Cal said on his radio show last night, he expected them to play zone just because, you know, Baylor's was so effective. I get Troy's not Baylor, but um, I guess how much of you guys stress zone offense? In, I know it's only been a couple practices, I guess, since since uh, Baylor, but do you expect Troy to play his own? And look at their stats. I think their opponents, and I know they're not as good as you guys, but they're seven to 37 on three. So they've, Apparently defended the three pretty well. <laughs> Those teams are bad. I don't know which, or maybe it's yeah. both. What, what, what's your take on them playing his own and how how well they've held teams down three point wise? I think we have to be prepared for them to play zone. I think that we have to want them to play zone so that we show people um, that we can handle a zone and that the goal is to get teams not to play a zone. You want to play a zone, we burn you. We, we are efficient against it. We do a great job against it so that you realize that you got to play us, man, where um, we eliminate, we we play the style of play that we want to play. Um, and I expect, I expect them to do that. Um, we expect them to do that. Coach Cal has spent the last couple of days working on the zone, um, so we're ready for it. Um, at the end of the day, is how the players digest it, react to it, and do it with confidence. And then I don't know, Boogie shot the three pretty well the the other night, and and a dude did. And you know, Z's shot well before a DJ against KU. But overall, you know, I think it's about twenty four percent or something in the exhibitions and the two regular season games. Do you feel good that that's not who you guys are? That y'all are gonna are a better shooting team than that, and and, and we'll start to show it. Definitely. I think, you know, shooting is more than just the actual shot. It's what happens before the shot. So, for example, if the ball is moving and it's hot, the ball gets penetrated and it's hit the wings and then it's an extra pass and you're shooting the ball in rhythm. Opposed to if the ball stays on the perimeter and you shoot it, 
you're more than likely shooting a contested three. And then the last part is shoot execution, shot execution. Shot execution is, am I shooting the ball the way I practice every day? Am I holding my follow through? Am I on balance? Um, am I shooting a contested shot? Well, if you're not doing those things, how can you could be the best shooter in the world? It's not going to go in unless you shoot it the way you shoot it in practice. Thanks. Potter? Yeah, Coach, in the last uh, two games, Jonas Adu hasn't played over nine minutes. So just wondering if uh, you expect him to play a little bit more going forward in Troy and just kind of what, what are your expectations of him as he kind of works back uh, healthy? And, and do you think that that keeps or helps some of the defensive issues you've seen um, uh, like against Baylor? Jonas Adu is a really good basketball player. He's proven that. Um, he's fought a bunch of injuries. Uh, he's getting healthy. Uh, we're just trying to bring him along slowly. I expect him to get better and better every day. Um, he's doing his preventative stuff and his maintenance stuff um, with therapy and, and as such. But Jonas is going to help us. He's going to bring a physicality to this team that we sorely need. He's going to bring rebounding to this team that we sorely need. He's a big guy that that sets great screens. Um, we just got to continue to allow him to get healthy so that he can help us. And then the the other two freshmen, I know we talked about Boogie a little bit, um, but Billy Richmond and Carter Knox have really come come off the bench and, and provided a spark for you guys. Just what can you say about their play so far early, early in the season and where they can kind of go from here? I love the fact that, that Billy and, and Carter come into games and they bring a toughness. You can see it right away. Uh, they bring an energy. You can see it right away. They are not overwhelmed by the moments. Uh, they are both only going to get better. Uh, there are roles on the team. If they continue to grow, we'll get bigger. Um, you know, the way we look at it, I will say this, Coach Cal looks at it like I got eight or nine starters. Those two kids could easily be in the lineup. Um, and they are going to help us win games. If we're going to be a great team, they're going to have to be a major part of it. Anything else to coach? No. All right, coach. Thanks. Appreciate your time. All right, guys. Take care.